This is Spain. This is also Spain. And this is Spain. Smaller towns and you won't believe it, this is also Spain. Just a house in the middle of nowhere. Perfect place to go on vacation if you ask me. No people constantly annoying you. Sure, to reach basically anything, you'll be driving a while, but you have peace. In our modern society though, we have become very much dependent on the internet. We use it for phone calls, TV, streaming, surfing, work and gaming. Being out there on the countryside with no infrastructure, where even mobile phone coverage does not reach you, this can become a huge challenge. Now this is Elon Musk. He's more known for Twitter, some weird takes and technologies such as Tesla and big giant rockets by SpaceX. However, he also promised to surf internet using a satellite driven service and it should cover the world, reaching even the most remote areas. With a simple set of a router, an antenna and an affordable service plan. The service is called Starlink. In addition, Starlink promised to be suitable for work, video conferencing, streaming and gaming. Welcome in everyone, I am Urchen and today I'm going to talk about Starlink and if it is any good for your everyday usage such as streaming, work or online online gaming. This video will be covering a few words on the service and the setup to begin with and then we will be having a look on what I'm using it for while traveling, downloads, streaming and some online gaming. The setup is very simple and I'll be giving some plus points for this. The set contains the dish, all needed cables and a Wi-Fi router. However, two things disturb me. The Wi-Fi router does not have an Ethernet port. There's an accessory for Starlink to get an Ethernet port, however, this will cost you 40 euros which is roughly 40 US dollars. For the price of the hardware, which is usually somewhat over 500 euros without discount, I would have expected an Ethernet port included with the Wi-Fi router. And this brings me to the next point. With the connection cable from the router towards the dish, you won't be able to easily pass it through a closed window or door. Also, there's no pass-through cable like a flat cable available as an accessory to buy. In the end, you will either need to drill holes or have the router outside which should be somewhat covered from rain and weather. The problem with keeping the router outside is the Wi-Fi signal. While 2.4 GHz is not much of an issue but is very limited in speed, the 5 GHz signal will degrade with concrete walls. My test setup is in Spain, in the middle of nowhere, and here we build a lot with concrete. You might need to split the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz band into two separate Wi-Fis if the signal is giving you an issue. The companion app for Starlink is easy easy to use and will guide you through the initial setup process. Please pay attention to the surrounding as obviously the dish will need a free sight to the sky. Starlink might not be for you if you tend to go on vacation in one of those murder cabins somewhere in the woods where all of a sudden the bridge is closed at midnight and you cannot exit the area. The hardware needs approximately 5 minutes to set up and about 15 minutes for the set to calibrate itself after it has been powered on. Download speeds are great. Here I am downloading Last Epoch using Steam and reach a maximum of almost 180 megabit per second with the generation 2 of Starlink using the 5 GHz Wi-Fi signal. The conditions are slightly rough though as we are currently having massive solar flares hitting Earth. Still, the speed is impressive. Latencies of 37 milliseconds are also very impressive, considering the signal has to reach low orbit space, back down to the ground station and the same with the response, just vice versa. Therefore, you won't be having issues with streaming videos, also Discord, Webex and all just runs fine. However, Starlink hands out the location you are currently at, so you might experience different content on services such as Netflix and Amazon Video, depending on where you currently are. Let's Come to gaming which should be the main focus of this video as online gaming is very sensitive to latency. Here we will be experiencing a different view. I have tested four different kinds of games. Hunt Showdown, Fortnite, V Rising and Guild Wars 2. With Guild Wars 2 I have only tested PvE. To begin with the latencies on Hunt Showdown 
or interesting to say the least. We have to work here with around 130 to 170 milliseconds if playing on US East, which is very at the edge of what should be acceptable. 62 milliseconds for Europe is okay-ish, though still very high. The problem here is Horn Showdown is very sensitive when it comes to latencies. You will be experiencing rubber banding, late hit markers, and you need to lead your shots further to compensate lag. My hopes here is the upcoming engine and server upgrade for Hunt, hoping some of the general performance fixes can get fixed to compensate some of the lag issues. Fortnite is a very different picture, 20 milliseconds to 56 milliseconds of delay, which is a result of a better server infrastructure, I guess. Movement feels fluent, load in times are great, there are absolutely no major problems when playing Fortnite online except for my own skill set, which just sucks in this game. So even after the issues with the Unreal engine update, the game just runs surprisingly well over Starlink. And at this point, I want to thank you for watching this far. If you find my videos interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video for the algorithm, and if you want to hang out with others and occasionally grab some game keys or play with us, feel free to join the Discord. The link is in the description below. But now back to business. Next game on our list is V Rising. V Rising just shortly had its 1.0 release, and I was playing on a community server we have in Germany. The game just runs fluent, no issues, during inventory management for example or fighting, no rubber banding can be felt. Same with Guild Wars 2. I have played the first Guild Wars back then with around 1000 milliseconds with some very old school satellite services here in Spain. Guild Wars 2 has a pretty good netcode which compensates latencies during PvE matches very well. PvP can get a little edgy though. Overall I have to say I have some mixed feelings when it comes to online gaming. It really depends on the game, the server quality and the server locations. Obviously, and as said before, it also depends on the quality of your Wi-Fi signal to the router. Concrete walls are a killer for Wi-Fi, especially for the 5 GHz band. Generation 3 of the Starlink set is about to be released and what I wish is really the comeback of an Ethernet port and some kind of accessory to get the uplink cable from the dish through a window or door. The cable is literally literally just Ethernet with a proprietary connect. From what I was informed, the Generation 3 router will at least bring Wi-Fi 6 and Ethernet. At least some good sign. So let's come to the availability and the pricing. Well, the service is not globally available yet, as promised before. You will have to check under the availability map on Starlink.com if your region has actually coverage. From the price, the solution is not cheap and prices really depends on the region you live in. I want to give you an indicator, but you need to check Starlink.com and don't take me for granted. Over here, usually the hardware set costs 550 euros with the option to either rent or buy it. At the time of recording, they were offering a hardware discount of 50%. The most interesting service plans would be for fixed installation, 50 euros a month with an ongoing contract. And, and if you are a resident in Spain, you would only have to pay 29 euros currently and 59 euros if you want to travel regional. The mobile contract is pausable at any time. And in case of Europe, the term regional means for the entire European region, meaning continent. As said, prices can vary by region and sometimes all of a sudden change over time, depending on how many users are using Starlink as their service. To conclude, I think SpaceX is offering here a good solution for anyone in need of an internet connection and being outside in the wild or having no infrastructure. The prices are okay, especially for vacation purposes where you can pause your service plan. Work, everyday video streaming works, gaming really depends on the game you're trying to play. But apart from that, it runs great. Anyway, that's all I have to say for this topic. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and see you on the next one.